Jazzcast Pros. I may be processing the sense of loss that I didn't allow myself to process when I wasn't able to walk well because I still had to keep moving on, right? Like I'm living this life. I have amazing friends that are willing and have been helping me out, but it's me here in this space by myself. And, you know, what does that look like? I know I didn't let myself really consider what paralysis might look like or what a long-term disability may look like in my life. Today, I'm going to take some time and think about it and try and identify the attachment to a thing in real life. Welcome to Healthy Illness, the podcast that is helping you build healthier relationships while living with mental health conditions. I am your host, Kelly Marie. It's been a while since we've been together. Today's podcast is impromptu. We're going to talk about this sense of loss that I've been feeling. It's been a couple of months since I've recorded anything, and that's because I was dealing with some health issues. And I have like five podcasts already planned out that I uh, sat down with Chaz and sketched everything out. Like I'm, I'm prepared, I'm ready. But I woke up this morning feeling sad, just feeling lost. Not lost, like I don't know where I'm going with the T, like can't find direction, but lost. I'm grieving something. I don't quite know what it is, but I couldn't shake it. And so I, made a promise that I would be completely transparent. I think I'm probably grieving a lot of things and finally stable enough to process them. What do I mean by that? I mean that probably because, you know, I'm no scientist. I'm no licensed mental health professional. I'm a peer living this life, growing and and all of those things with you. So what I think has happened with what I know about borderline personality disorder and just mental illness in general and mental health conditions is that the more stress you're under, the more things that you're going through, the mind will protect itself. And I believe I've been living in protection mode because of um, the health issue had back surgery. And so I'll go into all of that in another uh, podcast, but I've had to deal with everything from will I lose the ability to walk to not being able to do basic things for myself or in my home. And it's catching up, like it's compiling on top of each other. And there's shit everywhere. I just, I just need I don't know. I need some space. If I could blink my eyes and get rid of everything except my plants and a comfy place to sit and sleep, I think that would be ideal. I don't know what to do that will make the feeling go away. And it's not that I want it to go away. I want to I wanna process it. I want to know where it's coming from. I want to be able to identify what I've lost. And so I'll, I'll work on that. Maybe I'll go for a walk or throw some stuff in the garbage. I don't know. I don't know exactly how I'm going to get through this. I know that I will, even if I do nothing except sit back and feel the feelings. But I want to make it more useful to me, to my healing process. And one of the things that I know I struggle with is identifying emotions and what those emotions mean and and how they work in my brain and my life. I want to not dwell on it too long, but that's the thing about doing the work. You have to take time and dig deep into a thing to be able to pull out the root. Like I could throw on some happy music and be good to go, but without discovering where the loss is coming from or what it's attached to, 
it's going to come back. It's going to resurface and it's probably going to be today. So instead of having this day of highs and lows and highs and lows, I'm going to take some time and think about it and try and identify the attachment to the thing in real life, IRL. So I may be processing the sense of loss that I didn't allow myself to process when I wasn't able to walk well because I still had to keep moving on, right? Like I'm living this life. I have amazing friends that are willing and have been helping me out. But I mean, all in all, it's it's me here in this space by myself. And, you know, what does that look like? And I don't think I let myself, I know I didn't let myself really consider what paralysis might look like or what a long-term disability may look like in my life. I began looking for another place to live because I have stairs here and I know long-term I wouldn't be able to live in a place with stairs. And so I did begin to, to do that piece of it. That was the only thing and that was more practical than emotional, right? Like, you can't live someplace with stairs if you can't go up and down the stairs. And so I didn't take time to really cry it out or feel the feel the feelings. And now that I am better, I think my brain is saying, okay, now you can process all of that shit because that was a lot. I think, too, getting older and being alone is something that, could be a part of that process. You know, if something were to happen to me here, who would know? That's not a reason to live with somebody. But they, I mean, you know, there are pluses and minuses to every situation. Yeah. So it's a lot. It's a lot. Looking at relationships and asserting myself and asking for the things I need. I'm going to go into detail on that in another episode. But that has been something that has been weighing heavily on me. Surprisingly, though, work has not. I have a fabulous team and they're they're kicking ass. And so like, I have no concerns that the nine to five is being taken care of, which is great to be able to not have that be one of the things that is on my list of things weighing me down. Not weighing me down. It's not really weighing me down, but um, I do feel the weight of the emotion, right? This sense of, of grief, of loss. We are uh, coming up on Mother's Day, and I'm not a, I'm not big on holidays. I think you you should appreciate someone every day, not one day of the year. And so I'm not super huge uh, Mother's Day, but I get tired of explaining that to people um, when they they ask, "Oh, what are you doing for Mother's Day?" Nothing sitting in my chair watching TV or whatever, putting together Legos. But we are also coming on the one-year anniversary of the massacre here in Buffalo. And I don't feel a direct loss um, there. I didn't lose anyone in the massacre, but the weight, and that is weighty, of being Black in America and knowing that the systems that were set up to oppress a group of people created the environment for someone to just kill a bunch of folks because they were Black. Those two things, the uh, reconciling of my mobility and, you know, the anniversary of the massacre um, from a, a perspective of being Black in America are probably the the two things that are weighing heaviest on me. And so I can't change being Black in America. I am I am Black and I live in the United States of America. Like that's a thing. And so I know that it takes time for systems to change. And we are, are in the midst of making those changes. So it's not something I'm going to see in this lifetime. I think reconciling that with myself. Yeah, that's a little tough too. 
And so what does that mean? Navigating life, navigating mental illness, like even even that, like is my mental illness a mental illness or just a natural reaction to the life that I live and the stressors around me? I don't have the answer to that, but there is a part of this this journey and this process that I believe you come to a point of acceptance, which allows you to still find joy when there's nothing to really be joyful about. Um, You have to find it. And it can be in the smallest things, in a plant leaf, in a blade of grass. It doesn't have to be in eradicating these huge systems of oppression that most people don't even realize exist. And so I know that my brain will not hyper focus, but try and, and just process things and find paths forward to make all of the things better. And better is relative, right? Like if it were 100 degrees yesterday and 95 degrees today in uh, five less degrees, but it's still hot as hell. So better doesn't necessarily mean worked through or finished or complete or livable. So there's that. Greetings, everyone. My name is Ra. Yes, I am the host of Father Torch. I would like to take this time to invite you in my discussions on very, very important topics of being a black and brown father in today's society. Being a parent, the other parent, we face trials and tribulations too. We have worries, we have feelings. Here at Father Torch, we promote the advocacy of being the dad you wish you had. Join me at fathertorch.com. Our podcast today did not answer any questions or I didn't give you any lists. I didn't come to any conclusions or give you a path forward for making your life better. I don't know. There's a question there and there's an answer there and you're smart. I know you hear it and uh, you'll figure it out. So thank you um, for listening. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for reaching out for your concern. I appreciate it. There's a series coming up, not really a series, but, you know, Jazz and I did sit down and map out in the next couple of episodes. So I'm going to get on those and get back to living this life with a healthy illness. Up next on Healthy Illness podcast, I'm going to dive into all of the, the lessons that I've learned through this process of back surgery and healing and recovering and advocating for self and what the healing process looks like. So it should be pretty interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing um, that experience and those lessons with you. So again, until the next time, I am your host, Kelly Marie. You have been listening to Healthy Illness Podcast, the podcast helping you to build healthier relationships while living with mental health conditions right here on your favorite podcasting platform and on the JazzCast Pros Network. Hey, if you like this episode, check out Getting Real with Bossy, where we chat about what it's like to be a woman business owner. You'll hear interviews with women who are doing what it takes to succeed in the reality. If you've been thinking about starting a podcast and you want to include interviews with people across town, Riverside.fm offers unbelievable high quality recordings, regardless of your or your guest internet quality. And it also gives you separate audio and video tracks for each person speaking. And unlike Zoom, you don't have to install anything on your computer and your guests don't either. Head over to Riverside.fm and use promo code JazzyCast to get 60 free minutes of recording and 15% off a membership plan. Of what that looks like. We cover all the topics. Figuring out the rules and regulations, navigating business partnerships. Even if that's your spouse. Motherhood while running a business. Working within your values. And all the ups and downs of being the boss. Are you ready to get real? Pop over to our podcast, Getting Real with Bossy. Fantastic. If this was good to you, if you are digging healthy illness podcast, if you like the work, if you want to support the work, I encourage you to do so. You can do that. There's a link uh, to actually PayPal. So you can help support 
the work that Healthy Illness is doing to help people build healthier relationships while living with mental health conditions. So if you um, need someone to talk to, right, you can dial 988 on your phone. And no matter where you are in the continental U.S., 988 will connect you to the national um, crisis line. You don't have to be in crisis to call. But if you need someone to talk to, you can call 988. You can also text um, 741-741 because we're not always in a position to be able to make a phone call uh, when we need to talk to someone. So you can text 741-741, both places, the text line and the phone line are staffed with professionals that are able to talk to you and get you through whatever situation you're going through in the moment. So until the next time, I encourage you to be the light. You never know when someone is having their darkest day, you can be the light for them. That could be opening a door, holding an elevator, saying good morning, stopping and waiting for someone to respond when you say, hey, how are you? So many ways you can be the light. Hey, just by showing up, by listening, by being your best you. All right, until the next time.